And this roundabout is literally the end of the road. There is no more road. Good morning and welcome to another day on the NC500. This is episode two of the series. We are hitting the road this morning again. We have just stayed at Dornoch, which is a wee town about 40 miles north of Inverness. And in today's episode, stop number two is going to be John O'Groats. So we're going from here right up the very, very far north east coast of Scotland, still on the North Sea, up to John O'Groats, which is as far north as you can go on the British mainland. John O'Groats is often talked about because it is the great stop when you can go from John O'Groats all the way to, to Land's End in the south the biggest route in the UK. I'm excited, there's a couple of places I want to stop on the way that I think are going to be really cool. It is a beautiful, gorgeous, sunny day. We've got 19 degrees Celsius. But thanks for watching, thanks for joining in. It's great to have you here. And if you're new, don't forget, you need to hit the subscribe button down below and then you'll be part of the family. Then you'll get to see all these adventures every single Sunday. We're learning Scotland together. I'm seeing so many places I've never seen before right here on this route. Let's get going. Some of these hills are pretty, pretty testy, and I'm just thinking in my old wee Fiat, in my petrol car, we just wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. I think we um, accidentally got the red car memo <laughs> parked up here at this castle walk and we've got like five cars all the same colour. We have arrived in the very far north, almost as far north as you can go, just outside a town called Wick. Um, we have come down to the coast because we're going to visit a castle, a ruined castle that looked pretty amazing on Instagram, called Castle Sinclair. Um, and it's just down a wee path here, we've parked up we're gonna come down and see if we can get a, a better look at it. See what it looks like in person. But on the pictures there, on the map, on the notice board, it looked like it was once enormous. So, yeah, first exploration today outside the car. It was, it's been about an hour and a half drive so far. Beautiful, beautiful day. We've got a breeze, but it is gorgeous. So clear and bright. All right, here we are. This is Castle Sinclair Giriningo. I don't know if I'm saying that right, probably not. It says up here, Castle Sinclair Giriningo. Giriningo. Castle Sinclair Giriningo. It looks pretty spectacular from up here. It's perched up on this kind of high island rock thing, um, which is pretty impressive. And I think this is just gonna be such a great opportunity to take some photos and video down here. signs here saying lots of information and this one here actually gives you a good picture of how this castle evolved through the ages but at its peak it was an absolute enormous place but as so many of these things go family feuds the Sinclair family and like all the other warring clans and stuff up here they ended up getting dismantled and this one got dismantled in 1680 and has never ever been repaired since and apparently Castle Sinclair is the only castle in Scotland to be listed by the World Monument Fund on their watch list of castles that are in severe danger because of where it's perched obviously. Um, it looks like there's a lot of people funded to try and get restored a little bit but it is in a precarious position because of how it is situated on the shore and it looks like it's still owned by the Clan Sinclair Trust uh, which is fascinating. I'm gonna have a wee look inside because it just looks too good not to. As I found out 
This is actually two castles built in different centuries. Castle Sinclair and Castle Gornigo. I still can't pronounce that properly. It can be found just a few miles outside the town of Wick. You can actually see from up here, there's a lot of coastal paths you can actually go down and walk around the cliffs. It would be a wee bit dangerous to do it, but also pretty interesting. It says up there, opened by, or this stone was opened or given by Prince Charles, who's a patron of Clan Sinclair Trust. So there you go. This is the entrance. How awesome. This is just a totally open castle. There's no like entrance fee or nothing like that. This is amazing. This is incredible. It's like a it's like amazing here. Well guys, I am impressed. I mean, there's only a small part of the castle that you're actually allowed to walk around because the rest is pretty dangerous to be honest. They've, they've closed off the main tower, um, which is literally perched on top of an island cliff. But this place, wow, it's like a maze. You can just really feel the history. Look at these walls. You can actually see down here as well, a little narrow window out into the ocean and a hole down there, which was probably a loo. The castle's history is short, but brutal, and involved proper clan feuds. One of the most grisly stories concerns the fourth Earl of Caithness. When his son John, the master of Caithness, refused to murder prisoners from a rival clan as he'd been instructed to, the father imprisoned his son at Castle Sinclair for seven years. When John killed his own brother who'd come to his cell to taunt him, the Earl ordered his son be fed nothing but salt beef and denied water until he died of a maddening thirst. I think I've said this before, but I prefer castles like this that are in ruins that you can explore. You really get a feeling of the history and really get to enjoy it more, I think, than like properly done up castles like Edinburgh Castle. This is really authentic and I just think it's so awesome to be able to come here and see this on such an amazingly beautiful day. Wow. So you'll have seen me on the vlog talk a lot about right to roam that we have here in Scotland. So, for example, I just walked to that castle, right? But you'll notice all the way around here is farm fields. There are sheep in every field here. And the thing is, so much of the land here in Scotland is privately owned, mostly by farms, that if they said, you're not allowed to go through the farmyards, we'd never get to see some of these historic sites like that castle, for example. So thankfully here in this location, the farmer has actually built, probably in partnership with the trust that's managing that castle. They've built like an access path that goes right through the farmyard, which we can walk through as long as we keep the gates closed. But there are other sites in Scotland where there are no access paths, so you literally have to go through the farm field. You can't have historic monuments like that one blocked off to the public just because people own the land around it. But it's always worth remembering, it's only on foot, you can't just take your car anywhere. Definitely not. And secondly, you have to be very respectful of the land, not leave gates open, not damage property, not leave rubbish, not start any fires, because it is private property. We can go through it or around it, hopefully, but if it's not possible to go around it, you have to go through it, you have to do it with the utmost respect to the land. All right guys, we've arrived. Finally, at the end of the road in John O'Groats. The car there is charging up right next to where we're staying right here by the harbour. I'm gonna tell you about that later on. But first of all, I wanna take a wee walk down the harbour because this place here 
John O'Groats is actually quite significant for road trippers up on this region and people doing the Route 500. This roundabout is literally the end of the road. There is no more road as far north as you can go on the British mainland right here. A lot of people do challenges where they run or cycle or, or drive from Land's End to John O'Groats. This is it, this is the top. Look, there's actually a wee sign here that tells you end to end. So that's us, right in the very top. There's a sign up here, the famous John O'Groats sign, right next to our hotel, which explains some of the distances here to other parts. Look at that. You can actually see if you look over, this is a harbour down here, John O'Groats Harbour. Yeah, ferries here to see wildlife and stuff like that, but just along the road there, which we're going to go, we drive in a bit, you can get a bigger ferry over to the Orkney Islands, which are there behind me. You can just see them today. It's a nice, lovely, clear day. I will be going there later in the year. Spoiler alert. But listen, look. New York, 3,200 miles from here. Edinburgh. There's my home city, Edinburgh. 270 miles. It's very windy and actually pretty cold despite the sunshine here. But anyway, listen. Let's get our stuff into our room. We're in a room which looks absolutely incredible. Look at that. Bed all made up there. Big bathroom divided by these curtains. But the best thing of all, also got this nice living room, lounge area, and a kitchen up there. But the best thing of all, this window points directly out to the ocean and to the Orkney Islands. That is direct north out there. What a great view. Could get used to this. We are staying in the Together Travel Apartments and Lodges at John O'Groats, which are comfortable, stylish, and ideally located on the shorefront as far north as you can go. To book your stay, follow the link in the video's description down below. All right, so that's another day drawn to a close on the NC500, day two of our tour and John O'Groats is looking absolutely marvellous as the sun sets there behind me. Staying at the apartments here in John O'Groats, they are absolutely magnificent inside, really, really awesome and they just look amazing on the shoreline here, all the different colours. Absolutely love this place. I'm just going to make my way inside now and retire for the evening because has it been a long couple of days driving and I feel like we haven't had much rest yet. Tonight's a good chance to rest because the next two days, let me tell you, we are coming up to some of the hardest, most difficult terrain, the longest drives, probably some of the most spectacular places as well. But I'm going to enjoy tonight, recharge the batteries literally on the car, recharge my own batteries and then we'll be all ready for a new adventure. So. That's it for tonight. Guys, before I go, I just want to give a big shout out to all the people listed on the side here. Without their support on Patreon, I could not be making this series. So a big thanks to them. Also remember, Patreon supporters get to see some of these videos early. And I'm also doing an NC500 signed postcard series. If you'd like more information about how you can get those postcards, click on the link down below. Again, thank you very much for watching today's episode. Mm -hmm.